None of us can prove or disprove the existence of God. The difference is between us. I don't say that I'm an ordained minister. I don't think I can push it that far. On the, on the, uh, since it's you're evidently an agnostic, which is a confession that I'm very welcome to have, they not extracted from me, but heard you make. Now, here's the question. <laughs> you say these texts are misused. I say that they are not. Um, the Old Testament says, or does not say, that Abraham was doing a noble thing by offering to sacrifice a son to prove himself loyal to God or to the voices he was hearing in his head. It says there was a noble thing for him to do. He was rewarded for it by great, project, uh, great posterity and a great uh, long life. Offering to his son because of hearing voices in his head. This is not moral teaching to me. Is it not the case that the, that the Old Testament uh, says that the Amalekites must all be destroyed down to the last child? Everyone among them. God, leave no one. Yes, it does say that. The Bishop of Landaff, in an argument with Thomas Paine, once said, well, when it says keep the women, as Paine had pointed out, he said, I'm sure God didn't mean just to keep them for immoral purposes. But what does the Bishop of Landaff know about that? He says, kill the men, kill the children, and keep the virgins. I think I know what they had in mind. I don't think it's moral teaching. <laughs> to this day, there are nutbag settlers, uh, some Israeli citizens, some of them Americans, some of them Israeli Americans, trying to settle the West Bank in the name of this prophecy to throw other people off their land and establish a theocracy that will bring on the Messiah, and they hope, Armageddon and the end of the world. Well, I think the United States Supreme Court should hear argument that not one American dime can be used constitutionally for that project. Okay, it's high time. Cut it off. These people mean to, these people mean us real harm.